Before we download and install MySQL, let's take a few minutes to talk about what it is and then how we're going to interact with it. I'm out on the MySQL website and I have a pretty good definition right there. What is MySQL? Well, it's a database management system. The database management system is your liaison between you, the user, and the actual databases. So what I've highlighted down here is the database management system is what's going to allow you to add, access, and process data stored in your computer database. All right, there are a lot of different database management systems available. Microsoft has SQL Server. Um, they also have a personal version on Microsoft Access. Oracle has a large, larger version of a, a DBMS. IBM has a version of a database management system. There's another one called Postgres. There's several, all right? Um, the SQL in the name MySQL, right down here, that stands for Structured Query Language. So you'll hear it pronounced SQL. People actually say the letters, and then some people will say SQL. Um, you'll probably hear me say SQL very often, but it's synonymous. It most, both mean the same thing. And it's the standardized language to access databases. So whether you're talking about Oracle or uh, Microsoft SQL Server or just MySQL, they all use some form of SQL in order to access the data in the database. And that's the purpose of this course, is we're going to learn the basics of this language um, throughout the next 10 weeks. So once you install MySQL, it's going to be running as a service in the background on your computer. So if I run, uh, again, I'm in Windows 10. So if I run to services, you'll see a list of things that are running on this computer. And as I scroll down, which is too far, there's MySQL. It's running. It's going to run automatically when the computer starts. And so it's sitting there waiting to do its thing. So then the question becomes, well, how do I interact with that service that's running in the background? And there are actually several ways to do it, um, several front ends, if you will, that we're going to that you can use to to work with MySQL. The one we're going to use in this course is called MySQL Workbench. But before we look at that one, let me show you a couple others. Some people who are very good with command line interfaces and very good with the SQL language will use the, the command line interface that comes with MySQL. So if I just type MySQL on my system, you'll see a command line client right here. So you can click on that and let me enlarge the font. Okay, so the first thing it wants to know is, well, what is the password to connect to it? So when we install MySQL, it's going to ask for a password. And then once I want to access it, it, it um, it's asking for that password again. Now at this point, everything you do is at, at the command line. So you have to know what to type and type it. So for instance, if I want to show the databases, I type show databases with a semicolon, and there it lists them. If I want to create a database, I can type the command for doing that, create database. And I'll just call it test, and I'll put semicolon, hit enter. Well, now how do I know if it worked or not? Well, I can go back and type show databases. And all of a sudden, there is the test database. Now, if I wanted to put a table inside that database, well, first I have to tell it that I want to use that database. So I can say use test semicolon. And it goes, OK, that's changed. And now here's the command for creating a table. And you give the table a name. And then we put a semicolon. Um, I can go ahead and hit enter. It's not going to run until I put that semicolon. And by the way, that was a parenthesis. So anyway, so I can have an employee ID and the data type is int. And I'll make it the primary key. And then we'll go ahead and use this thing called auto increment. And obviously, this is the language you're going to learn this quarter. I'm not expecting you to know it right now. But you put a comma and then you hit enter. And I'll put in a, a column called name. And we'll make that a data type called varchar 40, whatever. And then we close that up, put a semicolon, and now we're creating a table. Hopefully it worked. So you get the idea. This is one interface that goes against MySQL. It's not a very easy to use one. We will not be using this one. Um, I am going to drop that database, get rid of it. 
and what do I call it? Test. Put my semicolon. Okay, so let me show you a simpler one to use. What we'll be using in this course is my SQL Workbench. That's why uh, we'll have you download that. You click on that and it's an application and it's going to provide a GUI interface, a graphical user interface to interact with the database. So when it first opens up, it has a local uh, connector to connect to it using the root account. So we'll double click on that. And here we are. So over here on the left, I can see all of the databases. It starts out with a query window. And the same thing, I can type those same commands here, create database, but I can hit the tab key and then I can type test semicolon and then using the lightning bolt, I can execute it. And by hitting this refresh button, all of a sudden there's my database. Of course, it has no tables in it. So same thing, I can say use test semicolon. Okay, now I'll just select that one line and hit my lightning bolt and it bolds it. And then I can come down here and use that same create table employee. Enter, we'll create a column called ID and make it an integer primary key and auto increment. I think I spelled increment wrong. Got to put a comma and then we'll have a column called name. Close that up, put a semicolon, and here we go. I can run just that. It says it did it down here, and I can come over here after I hit refresh, and now I can see my table. So it's a little easier to see. And in fact, I don't have to type these commands. Now in this course, that whole purpose, uh, or one of the purposes, objectives of the course, is to learn this language. But in this graphical user interface, there's little buttons up here for creating a new schema. Schema is another word for database. So I can just hit that and type test two or two and hit apply. Um, here we go. Finish. And now there's my test two. Then I can run right here and create a new table inside that. Um, anyway. Actually, it's going to go inside test, but you can do it all through a, a graphical user interface in that case. So I'm just closing these tabs. So anyway, MySQL Workbench is what we're going to be using for this course, but it's connecting to the same version of MySQL. Because I have test and test2 on here, if I were to go back to that command line client and say show databases, these guys would show up because they're connecting to that service that I had showed you back here, the MySQL service. And so those databases, I'm just connecting to them from two different approaches. If you ever um, sign up for a web host, you're going to create your own web page. And a lot of times they'll have a, a control panel that they use. Let's see, where do I have it here? I have one. So when you sign into your web host, you'll start out at a control panel and very often hosting services will provide you a MySQL database. So, one of the ways you interact with their database is through a tool called phpMyAdmin. Now, you can't type create database tests like we've been doing because of security issues, but they do give you a button for creating a database. So, I will hurry up and create my test database right here. Oh, it already exists, so fine. We can live with that. So, um, let me go back to the home, and now let me show you that interface. So, phpAdmin. So you click on that button, and here's what it looks like. So here's my test database, and if I run to this tab called SQL, I can now create a table called employee, and it's the same command where you get your um, ID, int, I won't spell it all out this time, name, varchar, and I can close it up and put a semicolon and now I'm creating a table in this test database. So over here you hit the go button. Oh, no database selected. So remember that use command? Use, um, oh boy, I think I could just type test. Let's see if that's going to work. And now we'll try it. Oh, I didn't like to use test. Okay, if I spell that right, will it take it? 
Yay, I took it. So if I hit refresh here, there is my employee table. Okay. So again, it's a different interface, but this time the SQL server, or my SQL is actually sitting on my web hosts server. It's not mine. So I'm not looking at my current ones, but um, I'm looking at the one on the web host. You can actually download tools that gives you this interface, PHP My Admin interface, to your local version of my SQL. So there's a tool called XAMP, there's another one called WAMP, and there's another one called ZWAMP, all very similar. The important part is the AMP part. Basically, then it's an Apache web server, so you end up creating a little web server on your computer. M stands for MySQL, and the P is PHP, and basically it provides a PHP My Admin. So uh, you can download any one of these products, and it would give you this tool to interact with your MySQL instance. Okay, so this would actually load MySQL, and it would load um, a little web server, and then it would load this tool, the PHP Admin, and so that could be your interface. I don't, it's not quite as user friendly as MySQL Workbench, that's why we're not using it in this course, but it works just the same. It can provide the same functionality, it just doesn't have some of the, the cool tools that we have with the MySQL Workbench. And finally, to wrap up this discussion, basically there's a website here that says there is, um, you know, it lists the top 10 GUI interface tools that you can get to MySQL. Their number one interface, if I, whoops, I didn't mean to hit that, is MySQL Workbench. And that's what we're going to use. But they list several others. Most of them I haven't played with. But again, we're talking about loading a database management system, and these tools are just a different way to interact with it. Right here. So here's PHP My Admin. That's the other one I've, I have shown you. What they don't show you is the command line, because that's not a GUI tool, right? That's the most painful way to interact with MySQL. So in summary, that was a long-winded way to say that MySQL is a database management system running as a service on your computer, and there are several tools for interacting with it. The tool we're going to use is MySQL Workbench, and in the next video I'll show you how to download both of these things, MySQL and MySQL Workbench. But recognize that there are other tools out there, and those of you who are doing web programming, um, probably will be using some form of PHP My Admin on your um, hosting service. So let me know if you have any questions.